control panels on this ship, including this one! Oh, jeez. Oh, what the hell was that? Oh, wow. That could have been Scrap Heap. Or Thal. No, Thal's dead. Definitely gotta be Scrap Heap. I just got this gut feeling that... Scrap Heap is still alive after me shooting him and all. The guy's built like a tank. Someone's overloaded the controls. <coughs> washing machines in here. Not to mention, this place looks so similar. Looks like we've been here before. Oh! I didn't see you guys there. I know, right? Who, Whose balls did we have to fondle to get our own very music? I can't exactly tell you guys, but it does rhyme with Galaxy Machine. They got a pair of nice gunads down below. Anyways, I'm busy over here, you know me, shooting zombie cyborgs left, right, and center, and oh, hello. Hmm. Hmm. Come on, buddy. Yeah. There we go. Look at that. Oh no, no, no! You can't get up. There we go. Uh, oh! He's trying to sneak up on me. Anyways, like I was saying, I'm here to retrieve this. Now, this guy right here, why am I looking at the viewfinder? This guy right here, all right, has information on here. 
that will tell me that Cardin Vex, aka the guy in the messed up medical chair, has been doing some dealings with the Stog again. Let's just say the reason why he's in that wheelchair is because of me. I put him in the chair. Anyways, he's after me again. But this time, he doesn't realize I have a trick up my sleeve. Oh, shoot! I lost my train of thought. But then again, there's no script to this story anyway, so... Either way, I kicked all your guys' asses. <laughs> Who's the man? I'm the man. I'm the man. Who's the man? I'm the man. Who's the man? I'm the man. And I got the key, card, thing, plastic green microchip thing, which I should have put in my pocket. Right. Oh, uh. Ah, son of a... Hey. Gah. 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 Oh. Who the fuck just shot me in the ass with an arrow? Where the fuck did this come from? You son, oh, you son oh, of a... Wait. Really? Wait, wait. Am I a bullet sky? Don't you fuck with me, pal. I got the power of God and enemy on my side. Wait, wait a minute. Let's just, just, just chill. Let's just chill. Oh no, it's a bad girl. Damn, holy smokes. Dude, Thal took this ship, ripped through here, and went out the, over there. Damn, and the whole ship just blew up and disintegrated and smashed into the insides of the uh, other compartments down there. I could even see it from here. Oh, hold up, hold up, somebody's alive over there. Oh, Lord behold. I've been waiting for this for a long time, Fleet. Any last words? Uh, I, I can speak normally. Damaged, like mind control off. The tour, the tour, tour, killing me won't make a damn fucking difference. The real culprit is God. Is is Kane Cruz. Creator and first leader of the stock. You'll find him on Praxis 7. He. He. He made me this way, turned me into a monster. He took me as, as one of his Voltarian prisoners. More like an experiment. I, uh, used me uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and what was left of my platoon at the time uh, make him suffer like 
what he did to you and your family. What the, what the fuck are you waiting for? Do it! <laughs> he was just going on and on and on. All right, time to find Kane Cruz. Here comes the next chapter. After finishing off of Vleet, I grabbed my sawed off shotgun, double barreled, or I like to call it the big boomstick, and started placing explosives here and there around the ship, hoping to bring down the last of the Stog battleships, Vleet's ship, once and for all. When I came back onto Vleet's uh, ship, I saw Billy Hayes, aka Scrap Heap, upgraded and armed to the teeth. Scrap Heap killed all of the Stog that was left on Vleet's ship. Ultimately, I shot him in the back and in the head, like in the previous episode. With the explosives I have placed armed and ready, I detonated them, causing the ship to lose orbit and ultimately crash into the surface below. Into the planet Mondas. Must get out of here while I still can. I must flee from the ship before I. Ah! Ooh. That one was good. Now the engine room. Mondas, the home world of the Mondasians. Humanoid like beings similar to you humans. Their civilization was 500 years ahead of your species and had begun their ever expansion into space. Or, if you want to call it expansion, in other words, they only conquered really or took over, I should say, one world. Just as they were about to expand more of their territories in space, the Valdarians came, invading Mondas in a time of global conflict. You see, before the Valdarians invaded the Mondasian homeworld, the Mondasians were under the rule of one royal family, the Kuz family. For years, the Mondasians were divided as a people between two factions. The ones that were augmented with cybernetics, considering themselves to be the next stage of evolution. The other side, considering themselves to be pure 
and wanting to stay natural in form. Even though a thousand years ago, 70% of the population of Mondasians were genetically engineered, the conflict lasted on and off for 300 years, until the rise and fall of Ku's brothers, Abel and Cain. Cain Ku's, the oldest one and the supporter of the cyborg Mondasians, Abel Ku's, the young one who was stronger, faster, and better than his older brother, became automatically leader of Mondas and the leader of the other side, the pure Mondasians. The two brothers were at each other's throats and were about to rage a massive war. Keep in mind, if it weren't for the Valdarians invading Mondas, King Kuz and his supporters would have been destroyed. During the war against the Valdarians, Cain and his followers started up a program called the Stog Program. Thus, the Stog were born. For three grueling years in total, the war lasted until the one and only planet that the Mondasians had colonized in their solar system, Clum was finally taken back by the Mondasians for only a few seconds until the Valdarians for the first time tested a prototype bomb that would later be refined and built for the Infinity Stones. The first Stog slash Mondasian fleet went to Valdarium to counterattack the Valdarians. While they made their attack, the Valdarians used the bomb on Clum, destroying the planet and causing havoc to the Mondasian solar system. The second fleet that took over Clum for a few seconds was completely obliterated. The first fleet that made the attack on Valdarium tried to make it back to Mondas, but the energy wave from the explosion of Clum destroyed most of the fleet. The ones that survived the wave went to regroup with the third and last fleet. On Mondas, there was a huge support from 30% of the general population of Mondas for the heroic efforts of the Stog. However, that didn't stop the rest of the population that hated the cybernetic augmented Mondasians. As soon as the war was over, another one started, and which ultimately wiped out the last of the Mondasians on Mondas with nuclear fire and ash. You may be asking yourself, how do I know this stuff, and how does this tie into this whole story? I'll tell you all, when I detonated the two bombs, and took care of Scrap Heap on Fleet Ship. I watched as Fleet Ship crashed into the surface of the planet. I landed onto the surface of the planet only to discover that this planet not only had a civilization on it, but it was the long lost planet of Mondas. So, as usual, I took my glowing stick of dense destiny, my Minecraft torch, and searched through a nearby forest. There, I found a large structure, relatively intact from the nuclear war that wiped out the Mondasians 10 to 12,000 years ago. I went inside and found the historical artifacts and information about the war, and also able coups, perfectly preserved in cryogenic freeze, unscathed from the nuclear war. So, once I had found him, I thought long and hard on what to do. I decided to take him with me onto my ship. There I would decide what I should do before anything else. Besides, I have to save Billy Hayes and put his mind into a new body before he dies. I know this is a lot of info to take in, but I assure you all that this is important information and story for all of you. 
for the future of this series. Billy. Oh man, this is nice bad. Yeah. yeah. Billy, if you can hear me. Oh God, he's alive. I can't believe it. Shotgun shell to the head. He must have some sort of nano machines repairing and damaging to his brain. That's why he's still alive and twitching. God, Jesus. God, this is like a case of Humpty Dumpty. And I'm like the king's men. And I gotta put you all back together. I'm not gonna let you die, man. Not here, not today, Billy. Don't worry, Billy. This is not a colonoscopy. I'm not gonna fiddle around with your anus. However, what I will do is transfer your consciousness out of your dying body and transplant it into this bad boy right here. This cybernetic head here. Just a, an old robot assassin that was trying to kill me. Long story. Named Saber. I hope you don't mind the name. I, I personally think it's pretty cool. To be honest. Well, without uh, 
without further ado, let's get right into it. There we go. And commence. Oh, before I do. Just attaching the uh, cable inside the, the new body of yours, inside the head. Cybernetic head. Anyways, with the press of this button on this control panel here, Oscar, or Billy, I'll be able to transfer your consciousness right now. You might feel a little bit of a headache, must warn you, but uh, don't worry, it, it, it should pass. Again. Oh. 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 